Susan Lisa Jahangir, and I am here with Patty Jordan for the WCA's The Space Between exhibition displayed at Alpha Art Gallery. Thank you so much for making the time to talk to us. Um, so I guess we'll just jump right into it. When you set out to create as an artist, where do you, where do you start and where does that spark of creation come from? Thank you, Anisa. I love that you used the word spark because that's what it feels like to me. I often need to be ignited into the process of creation. So it kind of fuels my work in that sense and I can then begin then with a thought igniting my surfaces. So in contrast, then I use fluid material to create some type of action or an experience on the surface of my paper. And usually it's ink or some type of dispersion of sorts. So actually you could say that the igniting um, is interesting because it's dealing with fire and water in a sense, starting with fire and then moving to fluid material. And given the climate we are living in right now, um, which I think is sort of a collective experience, what do you feel is the role of art and your art in times of crisis? Well, we definitely, um, it's a really critical question. We're definitely in a state of crisis right now. We have COVID-19 for one, and two, we have systemic social injustice in this country that has really kind of been spawned. So what I feel is that art can form community and healing that creates a bond on deeper levels between people. And we've seen even with our own national crisis, our health crisis is a pandemic that's global. And we have um, a crack in our culture right now. And in a sense, the fact that it's both positive and negative leaves an area or room for creation between that dialectic. Right now, the arts are in this very crucial time where we need to give voice to those who not only wanna be heard, but need to be heard. And I think it's important for us to take action through any means necessary including art to rebuild our communities. I think that is beautifully put. Um, and I think so much of what is happening in the world now is seeking um, to inspire people. So what would you say is your inspiration for Bifold Enumerations? Well, this piece was a little bit different for me because it's multimedia and I've created basically um, an illuminated diptych um, so basically what happened was the recent politicizing of disease has helped me to be inspired on this piece. Um, COVID-19 was being talked a lot about a lot as being an elusive strain, a virus that we can't even see. We can't even see it that easily. And that gave it a certain, for me, a dia dialogical power. And within that, um, I wanted to render what I wasn't feeling internalized um, inside myself as we were isolated during COVID-19. So this gave kind of like um, a chance to have an outward expression um, of what might be going inside the body, um, both emotionally and um, physically for a lot of people. And I, I felt it was a form of connection, but also a form of empowerment. Okay. I think it's it's especially interesting that you mentioned that this is a new kind of um, method of art making for you, a new form that it's taken. And so as a lecturer on visual and media culture, I'm curious what you feel the culture of visual media will come to be during and after this period and how you feel um, your art will change in that shift. Well. I'm really not sure what the direction of visual or media culture will be going forward. I think in a sense that's an interesting time for us because we don't know. But there have been certain things that have been very, very important catalysts for us. And one thing that I think that happened that was one of the most important catalysts related to media culture was what happened with the mobile device. That a very courageous bystander was able to, through a feeling of imperative or desperate action was there and felt the need to record George Floyd at a point when he was being deliberately murdered on the streets of America. And that ability to do that with a mobile device, like many things technologically in the past in our world, changed everything. We now have sort of like um, a media revolution, but I think be people being able to see evidence of the reality of someone in that condition and in that state, that it actually happened with that, with George Floyd not resisting, 
changed how we relate to media going forward. And it has empowered not only us nationally, it has um, sparked um, international response. And I don't think, um, given that, um, that there'll be ever any turning back now, that this will give or keep up a momentum going forward that could lead to systemic change based on um, this one event that happened in our lives. But I do think people being able to have a certain amount of control of their own media is liberating in a sense. And I think in this particular instance, that happened. So as an artist, then do you find the experience of art making in a world that is constantly in flux, that is constantly in change, to be an escape? And how has art making in this time period for you been affected? Art making has always been an escape for me. I found it to be at various points in my lifetime as an element of solace. However, given maybe my privilege or my various conditions in my environments, my privilege has been somewhat of an advantage to be able to go and isolate myself and create art. Um, I do feel though um, interacting with communities and others who are engaged in elements of creativity, who are interested in change, who um, want to challenge um, existing status quo and thought processes, when they get together um, and they share maybe even just their individual experience of making art, I think it's a, a great experience and a great process for us. So although um, I think maybe just by nature, my work tends to be very much about interiority. Um, and maybe that's what also the experience is of putting, you know, fluids on paper that then you must react to create some type of pictorial occurrence. That is usually um, a very inward experience. But I think it's very important for um, us, even such as with the Space Between ex exhibition, which we've been able to hold at Alpha Art Gallery, is a great way for us um, interior thinkers to come together and put together a holistic um, experience of a certain theme or content. So in that way, I do feel fortunate to have that. On the other side, the bifold experience of that is making art, although it may seem glamorous to want to be in the moment creating and waiting for the miracle to occur and the magic to happen, there is a lot of tediousness about it. And you have to sometimes just deal with the minute by minute and the day to day. And that's important to be able to recognize that because we all need that discipline in what we're doing in order to progress and move forward from good to great. So much to unpack there. And I think your perspective is so wonderful and wide and unique. And I really appreciate you taking the time to walk us through that, um, especially as viewers of art. And you did bring us back to what the exhibition is. So before we sign off, I just wanted to um, ask you just two more questions about the exhibition more directly about the piece that you're exhibiting in Alpha. In your artist statement, you mention the, uh, the function of gravity in determining much of the shape of the ink dispersions and bifold enumerations. So how do you think that this idea of gravity, something inevitable and uncontrollable, ties to the current state of the pandemic as you cite as your inspiration for the piece? I thank you for pinpointing that. Um, I love to work with gravity because just on a um, material level or on a method making level, it doesn't, I, all the weight is not on me. The material itself is providing me something to work with, creating a bifold relationship where it's not all my own um, determination being put on it. Part of it relates on chance along with the determination. So I love that as a, as a um, form of working, which a lot of my former professors and former art um, artists have done in the past, such as the Tashiza movement and the Japanese Gatai movement. They rely much more on considering the environment as a, as a player in the cause. However, there is something about gravity when um, I think about your question, is not only the physical gravity, but there's the weight of the historical moment that we're in. And that's also a form of gravity that if we're pushed to address that, not only singly, but in a group show, we pull together and we create greater gravity of um, a situation that needs to be um, addressed in, in society. So I think in that sense, it's coincidental in some sense that 
we had the idea for this show, The Space Between, maybe about a year and a half ago, um, on bridging communities and on dealing with issues of what happens in urban and suburban areas. How can we pull together? And then with COVID-19, it basically did happen. Um, so I think that um, when we pull together and see very various um, approaches to art uh, intermingling, we get a bigger picture. Okay. And you, you also mentioned in your artist statement um, ambiguity. So in this piece, um, that in what ways is this piece both ambiguous and quite clear in its meanings and in its intentions? I think that many artists work with ambiguity um, just by our, on our um, tendency to want to take thoughts or facts or um, opinions and then look at them from different sides or different angles. Um, the beauty in art is that even like philosophy, it has the ability to shape shift at any time. Um, and that gives us deeper levels of interpretation that gives us individual levels of interpretation that wouldn't be so fixed. And um, I think that's what makes art and art interpretation active for not just the maker, but also for the viewer. Um, so that's a little bit what I enjoy about ambiguity. The other thing I think is, I think ambiguity is beautiful. <laughs> I love the fact that um, a material surface, this one I'm working with lately, this mylar, this frosted mylar, is both opaque and transparent at the same time. You can't really say it's one and the other. And I think also these concerns that we've addressed rather recently in societies is this idea of things not having to be binary. That there's this toggle bar, um, the interstitial has been used too, but there's basically this toggle bar with all different ranges and angles um, in between the, the binary. Um, and I think that is also, um, beautiful to address and acknowledge. So um, I never like things to be too clear. I never like things to go completely into the area of realism because it just locks it for me and shuts it down. However, I love also the beauty that realism provides in details. So I hope that I'm being able to um, ride both both divides. <laughs> I think your bipolar enumeration certainly transcends us and grounds us simultaneously. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to answer some of our questions. Um, really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much for this opportunity. And also, Anissa, thank you also for these complex questions that you provided. <laughs> <laughs>